Welcome to this week's episode of The Real 100. Again, I'm your host, David Hill, and excited to bring to you another uh, good-looking prospect, young man by the name of Cameron Paul. Cameron is a six foot four, 230 pound, I'll give him 30 uh, pound, tight end slash receiver slash defensive end with Kirkwood High School. Kirkwood is just outside St. Louis uh, in the suburbs. Um, and Kirkwood has been known in that area for being a fair, very formidable high school program, uh, state titles, um, and, and some outstanding players that have come up, up out of there, including his current head coach by the name of Jeremy Macklin. Jeremy Macklin was a standout at Kirkwood High School, went on to star at the University of Missouri, uh, was an All-American there, and eventually was drafted in the first round by the Philadelphia uh, Eagles. Uh, he went on to play for Kansas City, the Chiefs, and I think he ended his career with the Baltimore Ravens, but now he's the head football coach at Kirkwood High School. I'm going to show you some film on Cameron, and when you see his film, you're going to see some of the influence I think that Jeremy Macklin has in terms of his route running uh, and hands and his ability to get upfield as a wide receiver, uh, but he is quite a target, and being only a junior, a 2022 graduate, he continues to develop under Coach Macklin's guidance. Uh, he might be a, uh, an incredible Division One prospect down the road. It'd be very interesting to see how he develops, particularly uh, if they can get this season off the ground, which it looks like they are going to try in the next few weeks. So uh, take a look at Cameron Paul um, and see what you think, and I think you'll enjoy hearing from him as well. As we look at the film here, you'll see Cam up top. He's the tall target in the slot. He sits down in that zone, and he shows a great target for the quarterback, obviously by being the height that he is, but he shows hands and locks the ball in, gets upfield. He probably should have turned outside instead of inside, but that's okay. Again, here in the slot, drives the guy off, sits right there in the hole, which is really nice. A lot of receivers, young receivers, don't do that. Uh, again, same clip, hands high, good catch, get up the field. Very nice, and here he is in shorts and a t-shirt, but look at how he drives the defender off, shows his hands, hands are high, defender is backing up, he sits down, has plenty of room to catch and turn up the field. Welcome to another series of episodes with uh, David Hill on The Real 100. Uh, we're associated with HS HSPN Sports, and I am uh, delighted, finally, to have with me, Chris, you and I go back a long ways, Chris Paul and his son, Cameron. I know you go by Cam more so, right? Okay, yeah. that's, a, that's a good thing. His son, Cam, who is now a junior, right, at Kirkwood High School in Missouri, just a suburb outside of St. Louis. I've spent a lot of time in the area and spent almost seven years there, and uh, was the athletic director at CBC. So I have a history with St. Louis. So I know where it is. I know what you do. I know where Kirkwood is. And uh, it's a great program. Cam, you're playing tight end. You're a 22, 2022 graduate. So you've got another full two years. Um, and you're playing tight end. They got you playing a little wide receiver too, I understand, right? I did. We're going to talk about why. <laughs> Your head coach probably has something to do with that. Are you playing defensive end too? Are you doing that? Yes, sir. Yeah, figured. So you're on both sides of the ball. Uh, Kirk will get an outstanding program has been that way for a long time. Chris, I'm really glad you could join us too. It's rare that we get dad and son together. In fact, dad and son, uh, this is not the only dad and son combination. You've got another son and had another son, Colin, correct? Um, and he, we talked about Colin a lot and how formidable he was and, uh, and, and the kind of experience he had at Lafayette High School, correct? Um, right. Some things that he did really, really well. And maybe some things that could have been different. Can you talk about that? I think that's valuable for our audience to hear, particularly from other dads and other players and uh, high school coaches and the like, to hear the things that, that, that were, you know, outstanding about Colin and things that probably could have been done a little bit differently. Chris, why don't you expand on that a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, thanks for having us, too, as well. Uh, yeah, Colin, uh, he was a special athlete, uh, really super fast, uh, big uh, wide receiver, six. He was probably a little over six five, two hundred twenty pounds. Uh, just could fly down the field. Um, yeah. I, th I think the the main thing with him was is um, I think all kids need to really keep their grades up. That's part of the recruiting process. If you're 
a great athlete, good athlete or whatever, and another kid's the same and he has a little bit better GPA, I think they're going to pick them over somebody that has a lower GPA. And I think that was the issue with him. He had quite a few offers, um, 14 really, 15 good offers. Okay. Um, I think he could have had a lot more if the GPA would have been a little higher. Okay. Other than that, yeah, it was. Yeah. Uh, that's what I. That's my take on it. Yeah. So you you think the academic wow. effort, if it had been more pronounced, would have been it would have parlayed into bigger and and more offers from other places. Absolutely. Yeah. He had a lot of big offers in there. Yeah. Uh, I think it just would have been a lot more offers. Um, I'm not really quite sure. Yeah, if they needed a wide receiver or not, but I'm thinking that the academics probably would have helped him a little bit more as well. If I mean, he wasn't bad academic wise, but sure, I think he was a little higher. You know, the higher you get it, obviously, the better you are. Yeah, no, no question about that, and and that's something that we'll discuss down the road as well too. And Cam, as you hear this, okay, and, and I know you probably have heard it from Dad before, <laughs> okay, and you know, as 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 athletes, more so as sons, we hear this all the time. There's a difference between what we hear and, and what we're listening to and what we're reacting to. Now, hearing that and knowing this, what do you take away from it and what, what, what can you do differently that you would learn from what your brother did and, and how will that affect you? How will that have an effect on you and what will you do differently? Uh, just keep the academics up. You know, It's a big part in the recruiting process and try and hopefully if I keep my grades up, then better offers will come. Yeah. Uh, you know, and, and offers, it's such an interesting dynamic, these offers, <laughs> and there's no real science to it. I think you probably, Chris, you probably experienced that with, with Colin. That doesn't, it doesn't come down to an exact science and it's kind of an arbitrary subjective type of thing, but there are some baselines uh, that certainly indicate that those things are going to come and come hopefully in abundance. But before we get into that, I want to talk a little bit about your, your situation there at Kirkwood. Cam, you've got a, uh, you've got a pretty famous guy coaching your football team. It's a Kirkwood graduate as well, too. He was a, he was a legend there, right? And so he goes and, and is uh, recruited and goes to the University of Missouri. So he's been through a high-level recruiting process. He's an All-American there. He, from my understanding, first-round draft choice, I know, with the Philadelphia uh, uh, Eagles, and then went on and had some time in Kansas City, which is pretty cool. And then I think he finished his career with the Ravens. And here he is now. He's your head football coach do you go to practice are you in awe of that how do you react to that and what kind of interactions do you guys have with a guy who's a you know a legend there in the state of Missouri let alone Kirkwood so what, what's that like to be coached by coach when, he, when he first came in I was like no way this is actually real <laughs> and being able to like share his expertise with us and right all he knows and his experiences with college and going to the league it right. just really with this perspective that it's actually real and it could actually happen um, yeah. more. I like bring the reality to it. Someone from Kirkwood where I live can actually go and become something like that. Yeah. I, I think it's magnificent. It's kind of a, it's kind of a treat I would assume. And here you are. And, you know, we said, said at the beginning of the show, you're, you're tight end slash wide receiver. Um, you know, we know coach Macklin was a, a heck of a receiver, punt returner and could do a lot of things. Um, how is he how is he incorporating you you're six five correct four okay oh, in between. 225 228 somewhere in there I, you know, I was looking up a guy and hope maybe you'll know this name mike jacecki do you know that name cam I do. okay mike jacecki is a tight end with the uh and i'm going to show my bias here he's a tight end with the miami dolphins not that i'm a dolphins fan but mike jacecki went to penn state where i went to school and so mike Jacecki, when I started to think about you, and I think about Mike Jacecki, Mike Jacecki was a heck of a, he was a heck of a volleyball player too. Not that you're doing that, but he's 6'6", 250 now with the Miami Dolphins, um, was, was a first round draft choice of theirs out of Penn State. So I see some similar body type, okay? Good enough athlete, they spread him out sometimes and play him wide out. And now the other guy that, that made a, I mean, he killed people with this, and I know you like this guy too, Gronkowski. He drives me. He, he drives me nuts because I'm not a Patriots fan, but you got to appreciate the talent, and he's a goofball and that kind of thing. But it, that's a real problem with a guy of that size who you can put in a split position, in a flex position. Are you doing some of those things at Kirkwood? Does Coach Macklin have you doing some of those things? Yeah, they have me at uh, the sniffer positions, like the 
right right behind the tackle, uh, attached to the line. You know, okay. uh, they'll spread me out wide by myself. Okay. Uh, just put me anywhere they're needed at the time of the play. Okay, that's got to be that's got to be a nice challenge for you and and a nice flexibility in showing your range of skill sets. I'm going to ask you this question. The other thing that comes into mind that, particularly with your position, it's critical that you're able to do that. How well do you block? Do you like that? <laughs> be honest. I like to catch the ball, but blocking <laughs> part of it too. Right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Let's let's all be honest. I mean, you know, blocking is not the most favorite thing in the world to do, but you got to do it. Yes, sir. You got to do it well, especially in today's game. So, um, kudos to you for having that kind of flexibility. And, and like I said, at six. Did I say six five or you six six? Six four, six four, six, six five. Four. Okay, six four. You're going to grow some more. You're not done growing. And so to have that ability, and you must have good feet and good hands to be able to be used in that capacity. So that's that's really outstanding for you. Um, question for you um, in terms of your other attributes, and we talked earlier in the show about you know how important the academic component is. What I want to know, and this is a question I have for you, and then maybe a question you'll get down the road. What is it about you? We know about the attributes. What is it about you? What else should a college coach know about you that would make him want you to be a part of their program? What do I need to know about you, Cam, in addition to what I already know physically and athletically and performance-wise? And you're young still. You've got some significant playing time still yet to go, but this is a critical season, obviously. But what, what is compelling enough and what can you compel me to know about you that would want to bring you into my program? What do you Definitely. want to college coaches? Mental toughness. It's kind of pretty hard to break me. Uh, being able to play both, both sides of the ball and be able to stay out on the field all the time and be able to do all these things to the fullest and play all four quarters, that's probably the most important part of my game. Excellent. So that flexibility and – okay. Talk to me a little bit about what kind of effort you have to put in uh, at this stage, being a young player. Um, you know, you're at a prolific high school. Kirkwood has won state titles. Um, I know you want to be one of the guys that's a go-to guy. Um, what, what kind of work do you have to put in to be the guy in that huddle, okay, that can be trusted to make a play at a given time? What kind of work does that take? 110% all the time. You got to be pedal to the metal all the time, you know, gas down. You got to just try your hardest all the time. You just got to do the extras, you know, try and um, – it's a it's a tough game, you know. You got to be a dog. You got to make sure, like, you're the go-to guy. Make sure they want to give you the ball in fourth and one. I want, And that's the guy I want to be. Do you, do you get the sense that that is, is happening for you personally? When you step out and you're doing some of the, you know, route running and you're, you know, and just in, in, in you know, pre-practice workouts and things of that nature, and then you get into specific periods within the practice period where, okay, we're going we're gonna to run this thing through you. Are you getting the sense that your teammates and Coach Macklin are beginning to say, we've got to find a way to involve, you know, Cam Paul into this, into this process? Are you getting that sense? And what gives you that sense that they're doing that? Uh, they're really starting to trust me more, especially being a younger guy, putting me out on the field with all these seniors and really giving me like a leadership role on the team okay. and really starting to feel like they trust me more. Are you, you, you mentioned a real important word, that leadership. What's your leadership style, Cam? What, are you a guy that talks? Um, are you a guy that, that, that yells? How do you display your leadership skills? Well, the team's only as good as the worst players, so got to hold each other accountable, make sure everyone's doing what they're doing, not slacking off. And, yeah, I get loud sometimes, but <laughs> just, just to keep them in check, you know. Okay. All right. And, and can you outbench your dad? And he's all jacked up over there. I didn't, I didn't know you were that jacked up, Chris. That's fantastic. Can you outbench him? Boy, he's, he's a little guy. No. <laughs> 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 well, he's obviously doing something right because he's, uh, he's got two outstanding young men that have been athletes, and I've been looking forward to talking to you uh, for a long time. I mean, you're hard to catch. You're harder to catch than, than Obama and Trump. Good Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Which is hopefully the case out there on Friday night.
Blue